Hello there, this is Chris and Roland and this is the Edmunds Carp algorithm for the maximum flow problem. But first, let's start by introducing the concept of flow networks. One of the easiest ways to think about flow networks is to imagine them as a system of pipes which join together at certain points but can have different diameters and hence different capacity for conducting whatever material is flowing through the network. Another important thing to note that is that the material that is flowing through the network comes in at one specific point and exits the network at another specific point. So the question is, how much material can we convey safely through this network without violating any of these capacity constraints? This is referred to as the maximum flow problem and has many applications from computer networks and electric circuit optimizations to other problems which have more abstract connections to flow networks and graph theory in general. Okay. Hello from me as well. Let's try to give a little bit more formal definition of flow networks. First of all, flow networks are types of graphs, which means there are some vertices and there are some edges connecting those vertices. Two vertices in the graph are special. One we refer to as a source and one we refer to as the sink. Flow networks are weakly connected directed graphs. This means that if you disregard the directions on the edges and think of the graph as an undirected one, then we can reach every vertex from every other vertex. Weights on the edges must be positive. These we refer to as capacities. Flow networks also must be simple graphs, which means there are no self-loops allowed. Also in the origin of flow networks, there are no anti-parallel edges. A flow in a flow network is a positive real-valued function that satisfies two important properties. One is capacity constraint, as one is flow conservation. Capacity constraint means that the amount of flow through an edge cannot exceed the capacity of that edge. Flow conservation means that the amount of flow entering the vertex must be equal to the amount of flow exiting that same vertex. Also, the amount of flow that flows through the network must be equal to the amount exiting the source and the amount entering the sink. The approach to the maximum flow problem we are going to consider now is to iteratively increase the flow we put through the network until an optimal one is reached. This is achieved by finding what's called an augmenting path from the source S to the sink T in a residual network that illustrates the capacities that have not yet been used as well as the flow in the flow network. This general scheme for solving the problem is known as the Ford Fulkerson method. For an arbitrary flow network F, the residual network GF has the same vertices as the original network and one edge or two anti-parallel edges for each original edge. If there is a flow along an edge SC, there is a backward edge CS of capacity equal to the flow on SC. If the flow along an edge SC is less than its capacity, there is also a forward edge SC in the residual network of weight equal to the difference between the capacity of SC and the flow we put on it. An augmenting path is simply a path from the source S to the sink T in the residual network, so this may include reversed edges. The smallest edge capacity along an augmenting path determines the capacity of the path itself, called the residual capacity, as it is not possible to propagate a greater amount through that path. Such an edge of minimal capacity is called a critical edge. Once an augmenting path in the residual network GF is found, its residual capacity is used to augment the discovered flow F. Whenever an edge on the augmenting path points in the same direction as the corresponding one in the original network, we add the residual capacity to the flow on the original edge. If on the contrary though, the edge points in the reverse direction, we subtract the residual capacity from the flow on the original edge. By repeatedly doing so, a point is reached where there exists no augmenting path from the source S to the sink T in the residual network. At that point, the flow is the maximum flow and the problem is solved. Now, let's take a look at a popular example. If we choose the augmenting path at random, which is what the Ford Fulkerson algorithm does, at worst case scenario, we pick the path through the edge where the capacity of the edge is 1, so we only increase the flow by 1. If we pick the same edge second time around as well, the critical edge is the same as before, except reversed. So, if we pick that path through that edge at every iteration, the worst case is 2000 iterations. If we would have picked a different path in the beginning that we could have sold, at best case, the maximum flow in just two iterations. 
So, in the worst possible case, applying the fault focus on algorithm to some network means that incrementing the, uh, the total flow by one at each augmenting step. In other words, the total running time can reach up to the value of the maximum flow times the number of edges, which is how much work we need to do at each iteration. It turns out that by picking the shortest available augmenting path from source to sink, we can improve the efficiency of the algorithm. And this is exactly what Edmond Karp does. So, we start off with a flow network G, and since initially the value of the flow on it equals zero, we can think of it as the residual of this flow denoted F0. The shortest augmenting path on it is SCT of residual capacity 4 defined by CT, which is of minimal capacity. We use this to augment the flow and we add 4 to the flows on SC and CT. The value of the flow now equals 4. Next, we build the residual network of our augmented flow F1. Here, we have a reversed edge CS of capacity 4 and a capacity of 6 minus 4 equaling to 2 on SC. The edge CT disappears since it was critical and is replaced only by its reverse TC. The shortest paths are now of length 3 and we imagine what BFS suggests SCDT that has residual capacity 2 and we again augment our, our flow correspondingly and the flow now becomes 6. Now, edges SC and CD are both fully loaded, so we only have the reverses CS and DC. But we have some capacity left on DT, which is 5. We then choose another augmenting path of length 3, which is SBET of residual capacity 3. We augment the flow again, and now we have a flow of 9. We then build the corresponding residual network, GF3, and we pick yet another augmenting path of length 3, this time round the other side, through A and D. The flow is augmented and becomes 14. Our new residual network, GF4, shows us that there is still a way to augment the flow, but this time the path is slightly longer. Namely, this is S, A, D, C, E, T of length 5 and residual capacity 2. We now augment the flow again, but here it's important to note that since we've traversed the reverse edge D, C, we now subtract the value 2 of the residual capacity of the augmenting path from the edge C, D, and we actually reduce its flow from 2 to 0. We see that there is actually now flow coming from S through C through E to T, although we never use this as an augmenting path. And since there is no more augmenting paths in GF5, we have now solved the problem and the maximum flow is actually 16. In order to figure out the running time of this algorithm, first one needs to note that augmenting paths are increasing monotonically as the algorithm progresses and also understand that from the time an edge becomes critical and is reversed in the subsequent residual network to the time it, is, it can be traversed again and possibly become critical again, the distance from, it, from S to its beginning increases by at least 2. The distance from the source S to some vertex U on the shortest path can reach, at most, the number of vertices V minus 2. So incrementing by at least 2, an edge UV can become critical at most V minus 2 over 2 times, which is basically order of V. And we know that there are an order of e pairs of vertices in the network that can become critical edges. Hence, we have a maximum number of iterations, that is, order of v e. As the work we need to do at each augmenting step to build the residual network and find the shortest paths is order of e, the total running time then equals order of v e squared. Thank you for watching this video.